Yes, very good. And do you know the ugly duckling? <laughs> yes. You are American because you know these stories. Jack and the Beanstalk, English. The Ugly Duckling, Danish. Cinderella, French. Now, we are Chinese, Chinese American. I will tell you stories, Chinese stories, Asian stories. I will tell you enough stories that if you put them together, you cannot be fooled by phony stories. Like, if I told you one day, Jack and the Beanstalk came across a green gob and he turned it into a girl. Am I lying or am I telling the truth? Is that Jack and the Beanstalk? No, that's not Jack and the Beanstalk. Unfortunately, there are people that tell fake Chinese stories. So this is your defense. If you're Chinese, you know the Chinese stories. Or if you're a friend of the Chinese, you know the Chinese stories. The first story, the very first story every Chinese learns is the fox and the tiger. One day, a little fox, you know what a little fox is? You know what a little fox is? Yeah. Yeah, the little fox. Yeah. And <laughs> little fox. About this tall, about this long, has pointed little ears. Well, he was walking along in the woods one day. Just minding his own business. It's a beautiful day. Oh. Out comes a tiger. Ah, ah, ah. Little fox. I'm going to eat you up, little fox. <laughs> and the little fox said, wait a minute, tiger. Wait a minute. You just don't come out of the woods. And very impo impolitely, I might add, say, I'm going to eat you up. What? I'm going to give you a chance. You obviously don't know that I am the king of the woods. Little fox. And the tiger says, oh, you, king of the woods? <laughs> you, you, you have these little claws, these little bitty claws. And I have these big, beautiful, sharp claws. You have this little body. <laughs> and I have this big, Beautiful body. You have these little teeth. Little rat teeth. And I have a And you, so how can you be king of the woods? Tiger Fox says, no, 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 Tiger. Yeah, la la, you're talking to me very mean, Tiger. You're talking to me very mean. And I'm, but you know, I know you were a big dumb guy. I know you were, well, no, 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 just calm down. I'll give you a chance. We'll walk down this road here, and we'll meet three animals. And if just one of the three animals says, it's all right, it's fair for you to eat me. I will let you eat me. And Tiger said, you're trying to trick me. <sighs> let me see if I have this straight. I get to eat you if walking down this trail, you meet, we meet, one animal that says it's fair for me to eat you? And the tiger says, the little fox says, yes. And the tiger says, and, 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 
I said, oh, well, how do I know you won't run away? I said, little fox says, well, to make sure I don't run away, why don't you walk behind me as close as you want? Says, Let me see if I have this right. We walk down this road, yes. We meet three animals, yes. If one of the animals says, it's fair for me to eat you, I get to eat you, right? Yes. And I get to walk behind you as close as I want to make sure you don't run away? Yes. Okay, let's go. So the little, little fox walks, and then tigers following behind him, and they meet, ah, who do they meet? A buffalo! A buffalo runs out of Yes, a buffalo! <laughs> and a buffalo says, oh, it's a beautiful day! <laughs> and he sees the tiger and says, oh, little fox! Ah, you're looking so nice today, little fox. It's, the sun is shining. Uh, I just wanted to say hi. Uh, I'll see you later. And the uh, tiger goes, huh, mm -hmm. that was very interesting. <laughs> yeah, that was very interesting. You walk a little further and they meet an alligator. And the alligator comes out and says, little fox, prepare to, prepare to greet me. Uh, it's a, such a shiny, Sunny day, it's, uh, oh, the grass is green, uh, the water is, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll see you later, uh, little fox, uh, yeah, see you later, alligator, and, and the tiger goes, yeah, yeah, and it, come, come across a snake, snake comes out, says, little fox, little fox, Little, little fox, I want to say, you were very handsome today, little fox. It's such a nice day. I just had to say, had to greet you. Uh, I'll see you later. And the snake goes off. Little fox and the tiger walk along a little further, and the tiger is very confused. And the fox turns around and says, well, fox, you feel like eating me now? And Tiger says, uh, wow, I, I must have been out of my mind. I, I didn't know who you were. Uh, uh, you are the king of the woods. Goes, that's the end of the story. Why didn't the tiger eat the little fox? Do you know why? No, okay. Can you figure out why the fox didn't get eaten? Okay, come in. <laughs> this is the little fox, <laughs> and I'm the tiger. Now, the little girl is a little girl. We ask her, can, is it fair for the tiger to eat me? Ask And what does she think? What she thinks that the tiger is the little fox's bodyguard. This, the whole title of that story is strategy. Strategy. Thank you. The, uh, uh, wow, really young kids, <laughs> uh, uh, the North Country Wolf, China was always in a state of war. The, the sto the, these stories are peasant stories. Uh, these stories are told because kids in the old days used to be kidnapped uh, and, offered, and uh, taken 
uh, what's to keep the kid Chinese or whatever they were when they were taken? These stories kind of address that. You're not going to tell your kid you're going to be kidnapped someday or you're going to, the terrible things are going to happen, but you arm them with stories. And, and a lot of the stories are about something we can all identify with, failed scholars, or uh, so, some kind of social outcast. And in the North Country Wolf, our social outcast is a failed scholar who's walking along and said, I flunked the exams. Oh boy, I'm stupid. I flunked the exams. I can't go home to my parents because I flunked the exams. And out comes the North Country Wolf. And, and the North Country Wolf says, save my life. Save my life and I'll give you silver. Well, I can't save your life. I'm a stupid scholar. I don't know how to save anybody's life. Save my life and I'll give you gold. No, I, I can't. Save my life. What do you have in the bag? I have my books. Those are stupid. Dump the books. Dump the books and put me in the bag. Uh, her, man. So, so the scholar dumps his books. Tiger gets in the bag. Tiger's head won't fit in the bag. The scholar pushes, pushes it. Finally gets his head in the bag, ties up the bag. Just, rip the bag, curb. Okay. He's carrying the tie. He's carrying this heavy wolf on his back. Hunters with an imperial crest on their chest ride up. Said, you stupid. Have you seen a wolf? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Rexon, uh, no, I haven't seen one. Well, maybe, uh, oh, you're so stupid. Yeah. So he, the hunters go off, walks on, about six miles. The wolf says, let me out of the bag. Let me out of the bag, I'm hungry. Gets out of the bag. I got hungry inside your bag. Therefore, I get to eat you. And this goes, that, that's not fair. That's not fair. What's not fair about it? Ah, I'll give you a chance. We'll walk along here, and we'll meet three elders. And if one of these elders says it's, it's not fair for me to eat you, well, I won't eat you. And this goes, if just one, one says it's not fair for me to eat you, for, for you to eat me, you won't eat me? He says, yes. Well, what, what if I don't? I'll eat you right now. Okay, okay. So they walk along. He says, talk to that old tree. He says, talk to a tree? Talk to a tree. All right. Old apricot tree, I beg your pardon, but I have a personal problem. I met this tiger on the road. He says, for saving life, he'll give me silver and gold. Put him in a bag and carry him along and save his life. And then he says he's going to eat me. Uh, uh, it's, it's, is it, do you think that's fair? And the old apricot tree says, I was born as a little seed. And you planted me. And you watered me. And I grew. And I grew into, into a beautiful tree. And you took the fruit off of me. And every year, you would pick more fruit off of me. And I grew with a beautiful tree. And then you let your kids climb on me and break my branches and burn me for firewood. Yes, it's fair for the top where the wolf to eat you. Oh, God. Walk on. The meat says, ah, oh, talk to that old horse. OK, go to the old horse. Old horse. I was running around this. And a tiger saved his life. Silver and gold. And it doesn't, it doesn't give me silver and gold. It comes out of the bag and it says, it's going to eat me. Is that fair? And the horse says, I was born. A little cold. 
and I ran at my mother's side, and you fed me, and you kept me out of the rain, and, and, and you, you combed my hair, and, and you took care of me, and, uh, and then you made me pull something, and you made me push something, and, I, and when I didn't push fast enough, you hit me. And when I didn't push fast enough, you, you would beat me, and then you would make me work. And yes, it's fair. Oh, that's true. They said, oh, no, I'm going to be eaten. Oh, walk along, and they meet an old teacher. But he's, he's flat on his face. He's knocked out. He's probably drunk. And he said, talk to the teacher. So he tells the old teacher. And the teacher's constantly in her uh, uh, what? what? Uh, I start all over again. Uh, the fox or the tiger or the... He says, oh, teacher, I was just walking along, minding my, minding my own business. And this wolf comes out and the teacher says, well, no, no, wait, wait a minute. Whoa. Uh, where did this happen? It's, well, it happened about six miles back. Well, you know, Confucius says that there are two sides to every question, and, and, and I'm, I'm confused, so, so let's just very carefully duplicate every step. So they walk back to six months, and, and he says, now, now, now what happened? Well, they, I took out my, he had my bag, and, 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 and there were my books over there, and, uh, uh, and, and, and then the tiger got in, in the, uh, then the, then a the, uh, wolf got in the bag. He said, oh, well, you know, uh, be, so the wolf said, or the teacher says, well, you know, I have to see everything. So the wolf gets in the bag and I, and I got, uh, and, and says, you know, this, this is how it was. I got in the bag, the teacher says, I can still see your head. Well, I had I had uh, stupid push my head down, and oh, that's you you need to see it. So okay, stupid, push my head down in the bag. Push, pushes his head down in the bag, and uh, then what happened? And, and then I tied it up. I said, well, you know, I have to see everything. So you know, just tie up the bag. Ties up the bag. Teacher says, walk off. Walk on. The strategy was deception. Deception. Trickery. Tricking. Using the strategy of the tiger, of, of the wolf itself against him. Walk on. You understand? No? The wolf is in the bag, it's all tied up, right where we began, leave him there, and walk on. You're not going to be eaten. Okay, now. Now, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Hey. Vinny. Josh and Vinny, and what's your name? Cecilia. Josh, Vinny, and Cecilia. Josh, Vinny, and Cecilia. Once upon a time, there were three little kids. One's name was Josh. One's name was Vinny. And one's name was Cecilia. And one night, their mother called them into her room and she said, Josh, Vinny, Cecilia, your mommy and your daddy and I are going out dancing tonight. But before we go, we would like you to go down to the grocery store and buy us some peanuts, but make sure you get home before dark because tonight is the night the big chicken comes out.
And whatever you do, do not take the shortcut home to the graveyard. Because that is where the big chicken lives. And so Josh, and Vinny, and Cecilia, they went down to the grocery store. They found the aisle that had the peanuts, but they got in a big argument. Mommy had forgotten to say what kind of peanuts to buy. Peanuts in a bag, peanuts in a can, peanuts in a sack, shell peanuts, unshelled peanuts, roasted peanuts, honey roasted peanuts, boiled peanuts, didn't know what kind of peanuts to buy. Georgia peanuts, California peanuts, Texas peanuts. Finally, they bought a can of cocktail peanuts. But when they got outside, it was dark. Then he said, it's dark. Josh said, don't be afraid of the dark. But the big chicken, Josh says. And Cecilia said, oh, I'm worried about the big chicken. Josh says, there's no big chicken. Let's take the shortcut home to the graveyard. <laughs> Don't be scared. We'll just stick together. And they so they cross the street into the graveyard. And they see the moon rise as they walk along through the graveyard. And they see their shadows in front of them extending, going over the land, over the grass. And then they see a big shadow come up over their three shadows. And they hear, ba 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 What would you say, Josh? Then he says, was that you, Josh? Josh said, no. It, it was Cecilia. She said it. Cecilia says, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> Walk a little further. Bah, bah. Bah, bah. Cecilia says, I, I didn't say that. It, it, it must have been. It must have been. Vinny said, Josh said it. And Josh, I didn't say nothing. I didn't hear nothing. Nobody said nothing, right? Walk along a little further. Bunk, bunk. Bunk, bunk. Cecilia says, Josh, you, you're the biggest one. Could you turn around and see what it is that's walking behind us? And just me? All right. And so Josh turns around and he sees the big chicken. It has toes as big as Cadillacs. It's it's legs as big as telephone poles. A body as big as a UPS truck. Its head is, is as big as a McDonald's. It's, it's, it has eyes as big as manhole covers. And Josh looks, and the eye looks at Josh. Buck, buck, and Josh says, run! And they run. You run across the street. You run into the house. You put the can of peanuts in the kitchen, and they run upstairs and hide under the bed. And they hear the big chicken walk into the house. Buck, buck. The big chicken walks into the kitchen. Buck, buck. The big chicken eats the peanuts. Buck, buck. The big chicken eats the sink. Buck, buck. The big chicken eats the ice box. Buck, buck. He 
eat all the food in the cabinet. Bok, bok. The big chicken climbs the stairs. Bok, bok. Goes to mommy and daddy's bedroom. Bok, bok. Eat your bottle furniture. Bok, bok. Goes to the bathroom. Eats everything there. Bok, bok. It walks to the kids' room. Toys. Buck, buck. It's a bottle of Cecilia's dolls. Buck, buck. It's everything. Buck, buck. And there's the kid's bed. Buck, buck. And under the bed are Josh, Vinny, and Cecilia. Buck, buck. It eats the bedspread. Buck, buck. Cecilia, go, 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 Josh, go, It eats the sheets, bop, bop. It eats the mattress, bop, bop. It eats the box springs, bop, bop. It looks down and it can see Cecilia, bop, bop. Josh, buck, buck, and boom! <laughs> the big chicken. Yes. <laughs> What'd you think? Did you like the big chicken? Oh, yeah. No, 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 you're going to have to clap. China and Japan and Korea at the time. You had your rulers and they owned people as their property. Uh, the nomads from the north would come and the nomads had a, had a different idea of what property was. Uh, to, the, uh, to the Chinese, property was the land that they occupied. Uh, they grew far, they grew vegetables on it, they grew things on it, they developed things on it. The nomads, they lived on horseback. Horses roam territories. The territories are theirs. Uh, so the Chinese vision of property and the nomads differed. This led to children being kidnapped, being taken, uh, and the defense became very interesting. Villages would sell their children, actually, to save their own lives. Something had to be done. With that as background for the adults, this is Naja and Momotaro. Naja is the Chinese story, and Momotaro is the Japanese story. Naja is born out of a lotus, and Momotaro is born out of a peach. Well, here we are in a beautiful part of China. Beautiful part of China. Nobody gets sick here. Everybody has good health. They have good weather. Perfect days. Everything is perfect. Uh, the Commandant's wife has been pregnant for three years. 
and the commandant is getting anxious. His wife goes into labor. She gives birth, not to a child, but to a lotus. Who is going to carry in this little lotus and tell the commandant he is the father of a flower? All the servants go, not me. Oh, finally they find the cutest, most lovable servant they can find and say, you do it. So this commandant, here is your child. The commandant. That? Three years for that? Takes out a sword, cuts open the lotus, and inside is a little boy. The little boy jumps out and runs all over the place. The servant catches them, gives them to the commandant, looks at them, says, well, this is kind of cute. At that point, a teacher flies down from the mountaintop. He says, Commandant, allow me to name your child, and I will restore him to full size. Please, restore him to full size, and name him anything you want, and become his teacher. Teacher names him Najab. Najab, and gives him a lotus seed, and takes the lotus seed and becomes full size. He gives Najab his weapons. Rick, uh, hoops of heaven and earth, a red spear, time goes by, Najah grows, but this part of China is ruled by, also ruled by the dragon king of the eastern sea. He has a deal with the commandant. He will give the commandant the good life. Nobody, no disease, good weather, in return for children to eat. Wow. Wow. Now John hears of this. Wow. At this point, let us go to Momotaro. Momotaro is born out of a peach. A similar couple, an old samurai couple, have retired to the country. The old man goes out in the woods to chop wood for fun. And the wo woman goes down to wash clothes and she sees a giant peach floating in the water. Inside. She said, this will make a good dessert for tonight. Takes the peach home. The old man comes home and inside they find a little boy. The name of the little boy, Momotaro! Oh, 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 yes, 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 Momotaro, no, Momotaro, oh, yes, yes, and Momotaro, Momotaro learns from his mother and father that this part of Japan is blessed, and all they uh, and all they they have the good life, the oni, live out in the sea. They come in every now and again, and all they ask, give us your children, and you will have the good life. Moltar says. That is not a good deal. That is not a good deal. That's a stupid deal. Uh, no, no, I said, no, you don't understand politics, son. Uh, just wait and you'll see it's a good deal. He said, no, I will have to kill the Oni. Momotaro goes off and he meets the dog, the pheasant, and the bird. Uh, the pheasant and the uh, dog, the pheasant, and a monkey, yes. Together they go off and they kill the Oni. As Naja, but Naja, instead of, back to Naja. Naja is out one morning with his friends and 
a demon comes up, the son of the dragon king comes up for children because it's time for the dragon kings to have a party. And he favors children for his party food. Ooh. comes up out of the water, snatches the child, not John, snatches the child back, kills the dragon prince, throws the dragon prince down in the, into the sea. The dragon prince's body come rest at the feet of the dragon king, and the dragon king is pissed. Oh, is <laughs> <laughs> <It's> very angry. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon King is very angry. Dragon King goes to the Commandant and says, your child, take care of your child. Your kid kills my child? No, we had a deal. And this is the way you keep your deal? No, no, take care of your child. And so the dragon, so the, the King, the Commandant takes his sword out to strike Naja down. But Naja snatches the sword out of the commandant's hand and cuts his own throat. He dies. Down from the mountaintop flies the crane. The magic deer brings Naja his weapons, lays him at his side. The weapons turn into a lotus seed. The crane flies the lotus seed up to the mountaintop. The teacher plants the lotus seed. And out of the lotus seed grows a new Naja. Thank you for bringing me, bringing me back. I didn't bring you back for nothing. You want to fight dragon kings? You will fight dragon kings. He gives them fire wheels to ride on. And when you, and when you fight the dragon kings, you will sprout three heads and six arms. With three heads and six arms, you can fight in all directions at once. Goes off, fights the dragon kings, he beats the dragon king. But because his father did not keep his promise to raise his son as his own, now John never goes home again. But Momotaro, because the parents gave in to him and help him with a with his flag, with Kibi Dongo, uh, his rice cakes to take off on a trip. He goes home again after rescuing the children. I know I've I've messed up the telling of it, but I hope you got the sense of it. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs>